but you figure in a five-story office building, <coughs> you could have a fair number of bicycle bicyclists for people that are commuting to work. I mean, as we become a more bicycle-friendly community, and as gas prices go up, we're going to see more and more people using that as an option for commuting. Um, the information and when that I found with regards to bicycle parking, and even and there's been a lot more work done on it since we created the town center district a few years ago. Uh, this is probably a low end requirement on bicycle parking, but um, we feel that this is a good place to start. And if we end up seeing where it's not adequate, it's something we can modify in the future. But I think for for now, it definitely would meet the needs of the bicyclers in our community. And the Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of Ordinance 1019, and staff also recommends approval of this ordinance. Ruth, I would like to know if you favor letting the designs be variable, or do you favor sort of a uniform bicycle rack approach? Well, I think they're cool when they look different, but you know. That's just a personal thing. Um, obviously, that I travel around and take pictures of bicycle racks. That should probably give you an <laughs> idea. <laughs> but, but you have to admit, your plain, ordinary, galvanized bike rack is pretty pedestrian. That's polite saying boring. Or choice of words, <laughs> there's question. Have you seen the alligator? Very pedestrian. It the, is. I mean, it have is. Have you seen the alligator that the, uh, the vendor sent us? Yes, I actually have the, the vendor. The irony of this is. The vendor contacted Daryl and said, "Hey, we really this is great. We're you know you're progressive. You're you're going with this." And Daryl forwarded it to Sue and myself and Mark and Jay, and uh, so I emailed the guy back, and we kind of had this volley of emails and thanked him for the information and that I would give it to folks that if when they come in if they had questions I would forward it to them. And I just kind of mentioned the red bike rack and the the one in Frisco, Colorado, and he emails back. The fish rack in Frisco is one of ours, <laughs> and uh, the red bike rack was also one of theirs. But well, uh, I guess it more, was interesting that I more to the point, <laughs> how do, what can we do to foster people being creative with these bike racks, other than saying, hey, you know, why don't you do something cool? Well, to, b to be honest with you, to this point, we've just been kind of hat in hand saying, can you please provide a bike rack, you know? Not required, but if you if you would be so inclined, we would really appreciate it. And so we've just been really happy when somebody provides a bike rack at this point. Now we might be a little bit more bold and say, hey, you know, here's some more information <coughs> if you're really interested. Well, no, I, by all means, we should do that. <laughs> well, we, could, we could hold a contest every year and have recognition for the most creative, creative bike, bike rack, rack or something I mean, like that. Why is that segment of... Uh, Parkside Road pedestrian unfriendly. It's because the people who thought about developing it didn't think about it in that way. So we need to encourage people to think about things in that way. And I hope we do. I want some alligators and fish. <laughs> well, we actually talked, you know, like with the Scranton, Pennsylvania one, you know, that's their Logo. brand. And I know that the, with the EDC and the board and everything that you've all been talking about branding, Farragut and thing. You know, we want an anchor or something like that. I don't know. I kind of like the variety myself, but that's just me. So. But I, I must, I must say, I'm in favor of um, more bike racks, even though I don't ride ride one <laughs> and probably won't. But uh, <laughs> I do have a reservation about one aspect of this requirement, and that is that I don't think one size fits all. The formula needs to be adjusted depending on what the store is. So, for example, a 100,000 square foot uh, Kroger's might work well for bikers. But I really don't think uh, 20 bicycle <coughs> spots at a 100,000 square foot lows would ever be filled. Because people are not going to ride supply. a bike down and well, take I, a load of lumber you, home. I will give you two scenarios, and I don't disagree with you at a certain level with regards to that. But one of the issues is it's just like car parking spaces. We aren't actually looking at the use when we are mandating parking for the number of cars. We're actually saying because 
the Kroger could change into a different use and could be cut up into multiple tenants and that sort of thing. But with regards to, let's say, a home improvement center, it, you're right. No one's going to be going down carrying their lumber on their back as they're bicycling home. But you may have, and likely in this town, it would be near a trail. And people um, may bicycle to work. And, you, and you, when you look at the number of employees at a facility like that, you actually have a large number of employees at... Uh, such facilities and so you're who you're accommodating in that particular case may not be the person that's actually a customer it may more be the, the employees that work there um, or and we don't necessarily advocate this but uh, for someone that you know bikes part of the way to wherever it is they're going and then rides with someone else or something like that to their job or something like that where you know we have the park and ride lot which folks do but we do know that that occurs at businesses around town um, but in that particular case I believe who you're really accommodating is the the employee rather than the customer so much but at the same time with the transition of uses, just like we don't require that parking lots be redesigned whenever there's a transition of use, it would be the same with the the bike parking. parking. <coughs> but if factor. we ever have a no. really yeah. big business and yeah. then we feel that there's a problem with it, we can come and amend this. <laughs> Another factor jumped out at me, and I've used some of the uh, ones along Turkey Creek, the cr trail there, the uh, bike racks, the variety of styles that you can get a 20 bike rack. And we saw this here, even though somebody didn't use it correctly. Uh, you could, you know, it's not like, you know, when I grew up in our schools, we had a 20 bike rack, it'd be this whole long thing. I mean, these are creative uses that you could get four or five bikes uh, in an area that would look fairly uh, creative. It wouldn't be uh, spread out. So I'm, I'm not as you know, concerned on the, on the numbers. I, I just like the idea of, of, of coming up with uh, some really different kinds of looks. And I was impressed the library's got one as well. And the other problem is safety. If people don't have them there, and I've seen this myself in a couple of stores, people will just leave bikes attached to a light post, uh, anything that's around there, and then people have to walk around it. And it becomes another issue for pedestrian traffic utilizing businesses. Uh, you've got to walk around some of that stuff. And some of these stores uh, do get some bike action along Turkey Creek. I've seen several bikes at times parked in front or along the side of buildings. Uh, people just lay them there. Of course, they're chained up, but they're not attached to anything necessarily unless they can find something sitting there. Now, I do have pictures, but uh, unfortunately, they had children hanging off of them. Well, adult young children hanging off of them. If you've ever been to Louisville, Kentucky, they really have they, it's street art, but they're bicycle racks. And they have little placards that say, this is a bicycle rack. And you would never know it by looking at it because they're, it's, it's street art that are designed that people can go up and hook their bikes up to it. And uh, if, you ever, if you ever have the opportunity to be in Louisville, Kentucky, um, I'll be going back up there soon, so hopefully I'll get some new pictures that don't have people hanging on the bike racks. But um, it is a very creative way that kind of says this is Louisville, Kentucky. Um, they're really neat. Hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this out off the top of my head, but is it? <coughs> Is it out of line without written guidelines to have the Visual Resources Board review bike rack designs for approval? I think that it would have to be specifically spelled out that that would be required. Well, we could specify that that be required, but is it out of line if we don't have any kind of specifications to be met? Because then it gets aesthetic. Right, and I... My concern is, is kind of what Alderman Markley brought up earlier about the um, economics of it. Because I'm pretty sure that the standard black bike rack, they're not very expensive at all. Um, they're, they're actually very inexpensive. But I'm pretty sure if you go into the more creative end of things, you are jumping up the cost. And I think that, you know, unless we wanted to mandate that, um, the idea of encouraging them to use variety, some may be more able to be creative, you know, what I'm saying. Because I know that, like that little bike rack that's in front of the town, that is a very inexpensive piece of equipment. 
think it cost us $39, actually. But we got it this partially through a grant. Uh, the mayor articulated one concern that I was kind of formulating is the, is the one size fits all. I'm a little bit concerned with the formula. It just says you have X number of square feet, you got to have X number of bicycle racks. And uh, I know the use can change, but I'd like to see some kind of use-based formula or maybe a, a lower standard or a lower um, quantity in the formula. Uh, in other words, maybe one for every 10,000 square feet or something like that, above a certain amount. If you say, yeah, we want every every facility with 5,000 square feet to have a bike rack, I think that's fine. But depending on the use, I mean, a warehouse building or something like that, is this just a... Uh, Currently, we don't allow warehousing. We don't allow okay, a lot bad of example, big uses. But, but, but I know what you're saying because I can think of some buildings that it's like I'm not really sure... Um, uh, whether it would be appropriate or not. Most of the types of things that are big box, you know, big footprint type things here yeah. that are allowed within our commercial districts actually would be very lar fairly large employers. And again, then you'd be going that you're accommodating the employee, not so much the customer. Well, I appreciate the concerns of Bob and the mayor on that issue, um, but you know, we can always grant a variance as long as it's reasonable. Um, and if this process doesn't work out moving forward, then the ordinance can be amended. But I say let's get going and keep it simple for now. Okay, is that a motion? I will make it a motion to approve this ordinance as it stands. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? You're welcome.